Hey guys, it's Dave, your mortgage guy. Com. And in this video, I'm going to break down how you can read your appraisal report and everything you need to know about that when getting a mortgage. But before I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with more videos like this. Let's dig into how to read your appraisal report when getting a mortgage. Keep in mind, if you have a conventional loan or an FHA or a VA loan, they're all going to be look about the same as this format. Okay, so keep in mind, no matter what the loan type, most likely you can still follow along in this. I'm also going to tell you, look, I'm not an appraiser, right? My goal here is to really kind of skim through the report Make sure you know the big things to pay attention for as you're reading through it, right? And not make this video an hour long, okay? And another thing is this. If it's a conventional loan approval, there's a scoring system one through five. If your appraisal report receives a four or higher, it's going to need a review of some sort, either a desk review where an appraiser at a desk is going to determine a value or confirm it or a field appraisal review where they're going to go out and do a second appraisal maybe it depends on the lender fha does not have that uh va does not have it except it does have something called tidewater which is if it doesn't think it's going to meet the value of the sales price it'll uh give you about 48 hours notice to challenge that value and at the end of this video i'm going to give a clip to another video on how to rebut an appraisal so if your appraisal value comes in lower and you want to challenge it or rebut it, I'm going to give you exactly how to do that and how to win. So let's dig into it. This top part right here is going to be property address, borrower, legal description. So you're the borrower. The address is the property address, right? Right here, you'll see for this particular example, excuse me, the sales price was $324.9. It's gonna give some neighborhood information here, right? Is it urban, suburban? Is it built up? Is it growing? Is it decreasing, right? Um, and so that's more kind of boring information, but information related to more of the neighborhood, right? And the usage of real estate in the area, right? And then you're gonna scroll down here. You've got you know electricity, gas, kind of the public utilities. General description, what type of foundation is it? Um, exterior information, materials, things like that. Honestly, uh, an underwriter is really not looking at any of those items. I wouldn't get too worried about it if you're seeing something that's slightly off. These things are not really addressed when it comes to the underwriting of your mortgage, right? So additional features, covered porch, covered patio, fence, sprinkler system. What are the things that are out of the norm compared to other homes or additional things, right? Um, here it says, are there any physical deficiencies or adverse conditions that could affect the liability, livability? This is issues with the house, right? Should it be condemned? Is there mold, right? Things like that would get brought up here. And then does the property generally conform to the neighborhood under that? Yes, it does. That's a regular house versus maybe it's a barn, right? Or something weird compared to all the rest of the neighborhood is regular homes. So let's get into meat and potatoes. This is the breakdown of comparable sales. Appraisers are going to use homes that have sold recently in the area to support that value. More than cost per square foot is going to be that the homes are going to need to be similar. Up here, you're going to have the addresses, even though I took them out, of your property. Comparable sale one, comparable sale two, comparable sale three. The first line there is going to be, what's the distance between those homes? This is important because if the appraiser is going very far out for home sales to support the value or not support it, that could cause a higher score or the underwriter to flag it, right? Um, and so that's something to keep in mind if it's not meeting value. In general, the rule of thumb, depending on if it's a suburban area, non-suburban rule, whatnot, is, you know, if it's suburbs, you really want to be a half a mile and under, a mile and under. It just kind of depends on your neighborhood. So that's a tough one to really latch onto. Sales price again, 324 Sales price of these homes, 310, 344.9, and 340. 
It does tell you the cost per square foot. In here is gonna be the loan type that the people used who bought it. Under that is gonna be date of sale of time. This is when the home sold. Look, this is a great example right here. If there's home sales that support your value that are older than let's say 90 days, but ones have sold for less in under 90 days, the appraiser is usually gonna use the most recent comps, home sale comparables, comps, right? to use to determine a value. So keep in mind, if they're older comps or newer comps, that affecting the value or could depending on what homes are selling for, okay? Um, in here is location, is it leasehold or fee simple? The site, the site is your yard size, your property size, right? So the whole property, and this one is 6,158 square feet. Right, we've got a view, it's just residential, design style, quality of construction, they're all Q4s, right, which is high quality. The actual age of the property, the condition. So C3 is just a regular condition. You will see higher and lower uh, condition grades and that could affect home sales or your home and the value if other homes are nicer and newer and yours is older or vice versa. Okay, next is the breakdown of the rooms. We've got nine rooms, three bedrooms, two bath, 21, 14 square feet. Comparable number one is 1820, then 2771. Keep in mind that if you're buying a newer home, when builders sell a home, they count the square footage from the outside in. So from that outside brick wall in is how they usually calculate the square footage. Appraisers count from the wall in, okay? So if you're seeing online, hey, it says my home is 2,200 square feet and the appraiser said it's 21, you know, 100, that could be the reason or one of the reasons, okay? Keep in mind, very rarely is it spot on, but the appraiser is measuring the square footage when they're doing the appraisal. Uh, functional utility is typical, heating and cooling system. They've got ceiling fans. They've got garages, porch or patios, uh, kitchen packages, things like that. Now, let's look at this. In here, you're going to see adjustments up or down based on the property being different, the home sales being different. So like a great example is on design style. It's a one-story, a one-story. And then comp number two is a two story and they're making an adjustment of $10,000 there, right? They're making another adjustment where they're deducting because that home is larger than the home that this person is buying, okay? And all the way at the bottom, they're gonna show the adjustment and then there's going to be a percentage, okay? A general rule of thumb is that this is a normal home and a normal di home division, and there's a lot of home sales to compare, that gross adjustment should be 10% or less, roughly, okay? It's just a good rule of thumb based on my 20 years of doing this. Now, what could cause your appraisal to get a bad score or a high score, excuse me, to need an appraisal review? Well, large adjustments right? If one of them has a pool or yours has a pool and none of them have any pools in the home sale comparables, that could get flagged, okay? So something to keep in mind. Um, down here is going to be when they got the history. So they pulled it to 11. Um, down here, this appraisal is made as is or subject to, this one is as is. There's nothing wrong with the home. The appraiser appraised it as is. Subject two is issues that need to be resolved, right? It's subject to fixing this item or getting wood of some wood rod or getting the pool up and running or things like that. So you want to watch for that. And then at the bottom is going to be the appraisal value. Hopefully you're still with me and hopefully you're still finding this exciting. All right. So we're scrolling down over here is the replacement cost approach. Sometimes people say, hey, which value is which? This is implying if they were to build it based on the cost of supplies, 
how much it would cost to build, things like that. Okay, that doesn't come into play on mortgages for the most part. It can come into play sometimes with your insurance agent if you're getting quotes. Okay, uh, project information, not all that relevant. This is general work, kind of cover your own behind verbiage. So we're going to skip all that. Otherwise, this video could be two hours long. Here, you're going to see that they've got more comps, comp four, comp five, comp six, right? So they're going to have more in there. Many appraisers are going to have up to six, okay? Most of them are always should be homes that have sold. But if you look, this is a listing and this is a listing. Sometimes an appraiser will add that to help strengthen the value of the appraisal report that they're doing. Maybe there aren't a lot of sales, so they will put in a listing or two. But that's just to add to the report, the bulk of the value and their work is going to be based off of home that, homes that have sold. All right. So we're going to keep on scrolling down, kind of additional verbiage, just cover your own behind type stuff. Keep in mind, an appraiser is not an inspector, right? The things that your inspector is catching is not always things that your appraiser is going to address. Two different people, two different jobs. This is an outline of the house where the patio is, the bedrooms right? The measurements, the garage, they're going to have usually a overview of the neighborhood and where your property is located in the neighborhood. Uh, this one has a plot map. So it shows again, where the property is. It, this one is interesting. There is going to be a map and the map is going to show you where all of the homes are located compared to yours that they use as home sales comparables. This is relevant when your home sales are going out a little bit to support the value. So if you're on the left side of a major highway and the home sales are on the right side, there may be a difference in value on the left side of the highway versus the right. That map is going to show you that, which is huge. And usually they're going to have a flood map. Isn't it a flood zone? This home was not. Based on the 500 year, the 100 year. They're going to have pictures, right? Front view, side views, right? Entrance, den, this is a beautiful home, family room, dining room, kitchens, breakfast, bedrooms. They're gonna have all those, the list goes on and on. This is also gonna be where they address any repairs that they need or want done. They're gonna reference them with a photo. So you know exactly where, let's say, that wood rod is that needs to be removed or corrected. They're gonna get photos of that. They're gonna give a photo of comparable one, comparable two, comparable three, right? And on and on. This is important because do those homes look anything like the home that you're buying? Is it better or worse, right? Um, and then this breaks down the conditional ratings, the conditional condition ratings, excuse me, C1, two, three, four, five, six. Let's keep scrolling on. And then really that's the end. And that's everything you need to know when reading your appraisal report, when it comes to getting a mortgage. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, I'd love to be your lender. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And oh yeah, stick around for this next video. I think you're gonna like it where I break down how to rebut an appraisal value if it came in low and how to win. Thanks guys.